Now, whether you believe in ghosts or not is irrelevant. The how-to guy decided to walk through the laughing forest. Far too many sightings for my liking. What's up YouTube? Today I thought I'd take the DJI Pocket 1 and the DJI Pocket 2 out as well as the Sony a7S3 which is what I'm filming on now. I cannot describe to you how dark this place actually is. The Sony a7S3 is doing a great job. I've got these two pocket cameras. How are they going to do in low light? How much light can these little sensors suck in? I mean I see these videos on YouTube where people are doing low light tests and then they go into the middle of the city and there's tons of light, almost more than daylight. Let's actually test these things in low creepy environments. This place is pretty damn creepy. It's got like serial killer vibes or something, you know. And look at that light back there. It keeps flickering. Did you see that? I didn't even do anything. I didn't kick it or anything. It's just doing that. Oh, ho, ho. super creepy. Ghost-like. I don't even believe in ghosts, but you know, you never know. Okay, so slightly better conditions. This is the DJI Pocket 2 and this is the DJI Pocket 1. I've got the exposure at plus 3 EV because I just thought, well, the more EV you've got, I suppose the exposure is going to be a little bit brighter. 6400 max ISO on the DJI Pocket 2, so it's going to be a little bit noisier. Pocket 1 only goes up to 3200 ISO, I believe. So this is what you get in low light conditions. I'm, I'm using the DJI Pocket 2 sound and I'm going to sync this up. And this is in really dark conditions. I cannot explain to you. There's a couple of lamps under me, but this is dark. So this is what you can expect from the Pocket 2 with the slightly bigger 1 over 1.7 inch sensor, max ISO and the DJI Pocket 1. And we're going to go in some brighter conditions now, so it should be a little bit better. There's a lot of really awesome people that watch the channel. I'll put them up on the screen. Every now and then I just put people's names on just to say thanks to people. I mean, it's not really, how can I really thank the people that spend their time to watch my videos? These are some of the people that generally watch a lot and they leave comments on the videos and I really appreciate all the guys that especially have been watching a long time. I hope you see your name and if I forgot you, I really do apologize. But we get really cool comments on the channel and people always try and encourage me to keep going and keep going and one day my channel is going to have 100,000 subscribers and I always think to myself, wow, it's not actually that easy and even when we get to 100,000 subscribers, just getting 10,000 views on the video is hard and I mean sometimes I do a video and it gets 300 views but that's how YouTube works and you know camera stuff is actually pretty niche believe it or not there's a couple big youtubers out there you know potato jet peter mckibbins and you know maddie and all those people kinds of people that get a lot of views and the rest the rest of us are kind of fighting for the extra thousand or ten thousand views that are out there of people wanting sort of more niche content i guess but you know once a camera gets released the big youtube channels will get that camera they'll do their video they'll get 60 or seventy thousand views depending on the camera and but by the time that same camera actually gets released to the general public most of the time the views are dead no one cares anymore so <laughs> that's what we're fighting with on this channel and some of you who have channels out there will know that you're fighting for scraps and it is hard and i'm not complaining but i'm just saying i'm just putting it out there that so tremendous low light conditions and you can see the pocket 2 handling the actual light that we have available at the moment which is very limited a couple of street lamps a couple of shop windows in the back the shopping center is kind of closed there's a couple of cars parked around the place the pocket one struggling a lot the DJI Pocket 2, slightly better, but I don't think it's going to look that wonderful. Look, you need to go to the city, as I said before, and have quite a lot of bright light. But it is doable in low light conditions. And this is pretty low light. I mean, I'd say this is probably the base level that you'd ever want to be at with the DJI Pocket 2 to get usable footage. Pocket 1 actually does look okay at the moment. So, so you will see the Pocket 2 exposing that grass slightly brighter at the bottom. And I think it looks like the better image. There is also a little bit more noise in the Pocket 2 because it goes up to 6400 ISO but you could just remove that in DaVinci Resolve 16 by using the denoise node which is probably a good option. This image looks very similar to me, they both look pretty darn good. There's actually something down there that I want to show you so I'm holding thumbs that this guy's actually going to be open. 
but it's pretty cool so just hold tight. vegan ice cream it's not bad check them out if you're ever in the area I guess Jay Cones I like entrepreneurs I too am a entrepreneur I mean this video is probably gonna make about five dollars damn it I just gave him five dollars so we're breaking even so I took the pocket two to a night market with quite a few little lights and strobe lights up and it actually did pretty darn well and you can see how well this camera can perform if you have a bit of light at your disposal and this isn't obviously really dark conditions but these were the Christmas lights a couple weeks back near my house the pocket one does a pretty good job itself um, slightly smaller field of view but still not a bad image and if we compare these two you will see the pocket two's garage door looks a little bit brighter but it's so close that to me they look pretty similar if you didn't know you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference on the next shot you will see the pocket one looks a little bit better but the pocket two looks better in that shed in the background and the grass is brighter and i mean why not test the sony a7s3 against the dji pocket 2 why not i mean we might as well i know it's not a fair comparison it's a full frame camera versus a small 1 over 1.7 inch sensor but this is the difference between the dji pocket 2 and the sony a7s3 i've got the sony a7s3 12,800 well now it's 10,000 iso because it's auto iso at the moment DJI Pocket 2 maxes out at 6400. I've also got active stabilization on the Sony a7S III, so it's going to be a little bit more stable. It does crop into your frame slightly. I've got a 20 millimeter lens, and let's go back to the DJI Pocket 2. There's not much light above me. In fact, you'll have to go towards the light in order to get some light, which is above me at the moment and probably look quite creepy, but just look how that Sony exposes. Unbelievable. There's not many cameras that can do this, man, in this kind of condition. I mean, you can just look at the Pocket 2 and compare the two cameras and you will see what this thing can do in pretty damn low light conditions. I mean, the Pocket 2 is not doing too bad. Let me just increase the exposure. We're approaching some light at the moment. Sony A7S III, DJI Pocket 2, not performing that bad. I mean, this is true low light. People talk about low light, as I said before, and then they go to the city and there's thousands of lights and cars and, you know, headlamps everywhere. That's not true low light. This is true low light. As you can see, the Sony a7S III pretty much see in the dark. And I love my DJI Pocket 2, but it was not designed for low light, especially not this kind of low light. So it's pretty impressive with this. There we go. There's a fair comparison. Pocket 2 versus the Sony a7S III. Pocket 2 exposing a little bit brighter there. Plus 3 exposure compensation Sony a7S3 will be a little bit more bouncy the active stabilization can only do so much what do you think about the pocket 2 versus the pocket 1 leave a comment below and what do you think about YouTube some of you have YouTube channels out there it is tricky it's hard to find your niche but I encourage you to keep going if you've gotten lazy and you stopped uploading because of other things in your life and I understand it is difficult to actually upload videos especially when you don't feel like you're getting any traction I found that myself sometimes you upload and upload enough you keep uploading and you're not really getting anywhere but i think from my perspective you just need to keep going find that niche find that audience that might be interested in your content and out there there's always someone that's going to be interested in your story and what you have to offer the world of youtube it's much harder to stand out than it used to be i think that's for sure mm -hmm.